Welcome to Charter California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. I'm glad you're with us today. Our guest is Gary DeLong. Mr. DeLong is a member of the Long Beach City Council. He is also a candidate for the United States Congress. I want to thank you so much for joining us. And you've been campaigning heavily for the last several months. And I understand that recently you uh, basically had a uh, telephonic town hall and you had several thousand people tune in. And I want to get a sense from you, especially given the district that you're running in, which is fairly middle of the road. What are voters saying to you on the telephonic campaign trail? Okay, well, first of all, thank you very much Please. for inviting me back. I appreciate it. We did. We called up to 50,000 people uh, several days ago. And what, first of all, what shocked us about it is we are hoping to get maybe 3,000, 3,200, kind of about right. a 6%. Over 7,000 people joined that phone call. Nice. So the first thing that we learned from it is people are engaged in the political process and they want to have a voice. Good. Who's going to be their elected official? What, it is good. What were they asking you though? I really want to hear because you're on the ground. I'm just in a studio. Okay. Well, you know what? You're, you're probably going to find out there's the same things that you and I care about. Number one was the economy. Clearly. Okay. What can I do to help move the economy forward? What what legislation could I offer? Could I support? Could I endorse? They would create jobs for Americans. Well, let's talk about that because um, you are running as a Republican. You are also running very proudly as a moderate Republican. I am. And there aren't a lot of Republicans running that proudly as a moderate Republican. I mean, we think about recently Richard Lugar, a moderate Republican, was defeated in his primary. And so what I'm wondering is, you know, the times of moderates in Congress really governing in the center, those days seem to be gone. So how are you going to create jobs, you know, through yeah, legislation sure. as a moderate Republican? There's no moderate Democrats well, you know, left. Let me, well, let me tell you one thing I learned. I think I knew this anyway, but let me tell you one thing I learned. Is we did three surveys throughout the teleform. We asked about how important was balancing the budget. We talked about health care. And we talked about how important it was to have somebody that was bipartisan that could work with both parties. Over 73% of the people said they expect you, you to be able to work with the other okay. guy. It's a huge issue for the American public. I, they are tired of, I'm standing on principle, I'm not going to no, budge, no, I'm not going to compromise. The, they want you to compromise. But here's the issue. I believe you. I believe that's what the survey said. But this is California. This is not the rest of the country. And Californians, I think, if you surveyed, took that same sure. survey in the panhandle of Florida, or the suburbs of Atlanta, I don't think you'd get that result. And so your fellow members, be it Democrats or Republicans, they're not being told to compromise. They're being told to stand their ground. You know, I'm, a, I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you. And you're allowed to do that. I appreciate yeah. that. You know, as I talk to people across the country, I think they think there's gridlock in Washington. They, they, they think, do think that. They think, you know, our economy is staggering because Congress can't get their act together and move it forward. They want you to work together and make things happen. They're going to measure you by they, your results. But then why are they voting out moderates like Dick Luger, like chasing out Olympia Snow in Maine, a moderate Republican? I mean, and this is not a Republican phenomenon. It is a Republican. The Blue Dog Democrats, they're vanishing. The equivalent of Blue Dog Republicans, they're, they're either losing or not returning. Certainly there is examples of where that's happened, but I tell you, I've been spending some time in Washington recently, not surprisingly. Yes. There's a group called the Tuesday Group. They meet on Wednesdays. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but it's a Tuesday group, but it, it, it's Republicans, it's Democrats, it's, you know, it's a social But is it a environment. caucus of 10? But there, no, it's, it was more than 10 people there, but it's 40 or 50, but you know, but they're working together saying, well, if you can get along in the evening, then maybe when, the next day you can get along and, and do some advanced well, legislation. Well, here's an example of, of my concern. Let's talk about the stimulus, which was passed by um, a Democratic Congress with I believe zero Republican votes, is that mm -hmm. right? Maybe there was one, I can't remember, but I think it was I think zero. There were, there were a handful. There were a handful. And, and those Republicans got beat up for it, that voted for it, by the way. There was, case a, there was point, a price to pay. Case in point. And if you look at kind of nonpartisan analysis, the CBO, which is nonpartisan, Fitch came out with a report recently that's not, that's, they both said that the stimulus actually worked. Um, it, it said that the policy of the, of the stimulus significantly softened the severity of the decline in the GDP, that without the stimulus, the U.S. might be mired in a recession. I mean, the, there were days where Republicans would see that, Democrats would see that, but there was just no interest in giving President Obama the votes. Well, first of all, let me say I question that outcome because it's really difficult to say, well, what would have happened if this didn't happen? Well, I, don't, I don't know that Fitch, we know. I mean, Fitch said. But we spent, uh, how much money did we spend? $900 trillion? $700 or, or, sorry, billion. $700 billion, $800 billion on that? I mean, I, I think it's questionable what the results were. I would have much rather seen 
economic growth in the private sector that created long-term jobs as opposed to Congress spending $800 billion or $700 billion that we didn't have and then adding it to the national debt for our kids to repay. Let's talk so, about health care, for example. If, if, can please, I, if I can please give you continue. another example, though, a good one, though, is let's take the House budget. All right, so the president sent his budget over, got zero votes, not from Democrats, not from Republicans. House Republicans, they put a budget, the congressman's Paul Ryan's budget, they got it approved. Oh, but but here's the problem. No, wait, no, no, I, I'm going to get to your point. You're right. The point is, though, it was on a, a partisan vote. I think that's a problem. I, Even though it passed, the Republicans need to work with the Democrats. Yes. They need a compromise. And, they need to find some middle ground. And, and they're going to have to give a little. You, you can't say, look, I have enough votes to pass the budget, so I'm going to pass the one I want. No, you need to make sure it's a bipartisan budget not, or you're though. not going to get I the mean, Senate. I recently read an article by someone from the uh, American Enterprise Institute, a conservative think tank, and Brookings Institute, a liberal think tank. And they said very clearly in their analysis that the gridlock is really as a result of Republican incalcitrance. I don't know that I specifically agree with that, but there is a view right now that the Republicans want the issue as opposed to the as opposed to solutions. Well, what I can tell you is that I think the Republicans feel that it's the Democrats that are being recalcitrant, do. and the Democrats think it's the Republicans are being recalcitrant. I think both parties need to do a better job working together, and I think we can. I'll tell you, I, I'm an optimist, but if I did not believe it was true, I wouldn't go back to Washington because it's a waste of my time. How do you change. ensure that w when and if you're elected that you won't be chastised, ostracized, excluded because you are a moderate Republican by leadership who is giving you committee assignments. Because I've already had these conversations with the House leadership, that if I'm successful in this race, here's who I am. While I am fiscally conservative, so I think you can pretty much count on me, anything that's pro-jobs, pro-economic growth, I'm your guy, I'm with you. But candidly on the social issues, I'm not in line with and, many of the, with many and, of the hardcore Republicans, and they need to respect that because candidly, their alternative to are, me is a liberal right, Democrat. But are are they respectful enough to recognize that you are running in a district that, in a lot of ways, mirrors what you're describing? So if you are pushed to the right, I won't be coming back. Right. I mean, it's, that, it's that simple. You you pull me to the right, mm -hmm. then you'll have a liberal Democrat replace me. Not a moderate Democrat. Are there other Democrat. districts like that in the, around the nation? that you can think of? You know, I'm sure there are, but I, I am so myopically focused on my race. I know, I can tell you everything about every voter demographic, but you know, you get five miles on either side. Of course. That's well, what so I'm So tell us about your on. district. Well, it's a great district. It's a new California 47th congressional mm -hmm. district. 58% of the district's in Los Angeles County, 53% is Long Beach. The remaining 5% is Avalon. Is it every sliver of Long Beach City? It is 85% of it. Long Beach. The top of Long Beach is not included. Uh, it's got Avalon, Catalina, Signal Hill, a portion of Lakewood, and then the 42% that's in Orange County of the communities of Rossmore, Low South, Cypress, portions of Westminster, Stanton, Garden Grove, and Buena Park. It, it, it's a great district. Intuitively, I would think that the L.A. County part is Democratic and the Republican part is in Orange County. Is that necessarily true? Um, it's not that simple, but yes, there's a higher percentage of Democrats in L.A. County than there are in Orange County. I think it's fair to say you're probably very well known in the L.A. County portion of this district. I am. How are you introducing yourself to our friends in Orange County? Thank you. That's exactly yes. what I'm doing. I'm introducing myself. In fact, over 90% of the elected officials in Orange County have endorsed me. Congressman Royce endorsed me. Congressman Rohrbach has endorsed me. State Senator Tom Harmon, Assembly Member. Uh, Any Jim Silver. Yes, uh, several mayors uh, have endorsed me. They're Democrats. A Democrat Mayor Larry Forster from Signal Hill. Democrat Mayor Carol Warren from uh, from Stanton. La Democrat. Most importantly, and in our Thank final you. moments, what is it like to run for Congress? Give us a little insight. Oh, I tell you, it's uh, it's everything I expected and more. And less. Uh, well, <laughs> no, hey, Joe, and more at this point. Right. I mean, you know, you you I've got a tiger by the tra tail. I mean, right. it, which is a good thing. The campaign sure. is growing. Uh, more volunteers. More people want to support. It's 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 an amazing process. But I tell you. I, I'm getting weary. I can only imagine. I want to thank you so much for joining us. His name is Gary DeLong. He is a member of the City Council in Long Beach, also a candidate for the United States Congress. When we come back, we'll be speaking with the chair of the State Board of Equalization. His name is Jerome Horton. I'm Brad Palmer, and so we'll be right back on Charter California Edition. Pursuant to the 2010 census, which state gained the most seats in the United States House of Representatives? Arizona, California, Florida, or Texas? Texas gained four congressional seats, Florida gained two, California did not gain or lose seats, and New York and Ohio lost two seats. 
It's Charter California edition. I'm Brad Palmer, and I'm glad you're still with us. Our guest is Jerome Horton. Mr. Horton is a member of the Board of Equalization in California. He's actually chair of that board, which includes five members total, four elected, and the controller. And I want to speak with you briefly about the controller before we talk about some tax assistance that's being mm -hmm. offered by the board. Sure. The controller recently came out with a report, and it talked about receipts. And uh, tax receipts are coming in lower than the governor's budget mm -hmm. uh, predictions. Could you explain that to us? Does that mean we're getting less tax revenue than we did last year? It's a little confusing. Well, I think the confusing part is, Brad, that there's a projection that the government right. will make every year, which has nothing really to do with reality. It's just their best guess. Mm -hmm. And so what the controller is saying is that the guess that was made uh, last year sometime was off. I and that see. the revenues are not the same as they had originally projected. So it's, it's, not, it's not an indication of anything drastically going wrong. I understand. But it's certainly an indication of not having the revenues necessary to cover the costs, the expenses that government has. And so what that means is, is that the governor, the legislature, uh, sets a budget based upon these predictions. And when the dollars don't come in, the deficit is therefore larger. So when we hear that there's a eight, nine billion dollar budget deficit with the two billion dollar shortfall, it's now 10, 11 billion dollars. Yes, and possibly higher uh, than 11 billion dollars. I mean, this is an issue where government focuses on raising taxes mm -hmm. or cutting services. And sometimes they don't cut enough and they don't necessarily have enough revenue. There's another area, though, Brad, that I think it's important that we begin to look at, and that's called government efficiency. Mm -hmm. And how can government be more efficient? And I think that's the message that we have to deliver to the public. It's interesting you mention that because we hear a lot about a gov government efficiency, and we're all for uh, the whole concept of being more efficient, uh, really using dollars wisely, avoiding waste, fraud, and abuse. Mm -hmm. but, but when can we get to a point where we engage in programs to eliminate what I just described, and mm -hmm. we see the savings. I mean, we keep talking about it, but it takes time to implement programs that create savings. Well, I'll tell you, over the last two years at the Board of Equalization, we've impl implemented a number of government efficiency programs, and we're generating an additional, uh, I think it's somewhere around $150 million. That's real money. As a result of these uh, government efficiency programs, we're accelerating uh, the resolution of problems. So if we solve the problems earlier, the revenue comes in earlier, it reduces the interest and penalties that taxpayers have to pay, and then working with the taxpayers and educating them and helping them to, to comply with the existing law. And then another thing that we try to do on the efficiency basis is to accelerate the opening of a business. We want to get the we want to get individuals who are inspiring. And we're going to talk to about that on a soon. future edition <laughs> of California Edition. Look forward but to it. Now I want to speak with you about how you have been helping taxpayers, and especially taxpayers who may not have the resources, the knowledge to go to a tax preparer mm -hmm. that can get them uh, the maximum refund to which they are entitled. Yes. This is not about cutting yes. corners. This it's not about cheating out the government. This is about providing legal assistance for taxing. Let's talk about the free volunteer income tax assistance program known as VITA, which is administered through the Board of Equalization. Okay. Board of Equalization is one of the entities that administers uh, it. There are others. And, and we're focusing on earned income tax credit. And I think, uh, Brad, the optimum word there is earned. Every taxpayer has earned these credits. They're entitled to it and let, if they meet specific criteria. And let's explain that because what's known as the EITC is a little complicated, but I know you have the ability to yes. kind of break it down for us. What is the earned income tax credit? For any family that has earned $50,000 in salary, the, fe the federal government gives them a tax credit up to $5,600 plus a few dollars here and sure. there. And so those tax credits can be used to offset your liability and increase your refund. And, and think about that. To live on $50,000 is not uncommon no. in the state of California. No. It also doesn't necessarily make you um, poor. I no. mean, there are plenty of families that are doing quite well on no. $50,000 or less. Yeah. But the problem is, is they don't know they can claim the end earned income tax credit. And if they don't claim it, they don't get it. And that's the tragedy, Brad. Over 800,000 individuals in the state of California fell 
to recapture these these funds and that's about 1.3 billion dollars right. that could be used to stimulate our economy so as we talk about revenues being down it's another government efficiency measure that and we can recapture these federal dollars and put them in the hands right. and of this people is a federal need. credit not a state credit yes. so it doesn't necessarily impact the state's bottom line it doesn't in fact it does the reverse because it puts more money into the economy exactly okay so let's talk about some of the successes of the program I know for example that in your district which is essentially, is it every LA sliver County. of L.A. County? Mostly, yes. Anything else or just L.A. County proper? M mostly L.A. County. Okay. I, I Sooner or later we'll be into Ventura well, County. Well, there you it's have it with new lines. <laughs> yeah. but it, over the last four months in tax year 2012, you served, got all, over 700 clients as part of the VITA program. And as a result, those clients were able to receive over $1 million yes. that they would not have received yes. in refunds. Exciting about that, Brad. The, the, the real exciting thing for me, though, is that many of our employees volunteered on their own time, came out on the weekend, and they helped individuals complete their tax returns. Individuals are paying billions of dollars to have their tax returns done by private entities, and many of the folks that that don't make the money, they can't afford to, to pay all these extra costs. And then, of course, there isn't a focus on getting the refunds back. We focus on recapturing these federal dollars and putting them back in the hands of the pockets of senior citizens and people who need the money the most. I mean, if you can imagine earning $50,000 and then at the end of the year getting a $5,000 bonus mm. just by completing your tax returns, we think everyone should do look, it. Unfortunately, look, they don't. We've passed uh, the April 15th deadline, yes. but I am sure there are many people out there who have not filed, have properly sought an extension, have not properly sought an extension. Yes. Is there still um, hope or are there still programs out there in terms of VITA seminars? Uh, the, the seminars don't exist, but mm -hmm. there are still individuals out there, programs that will help you file your income tax returns. Many of your listeners can actually call my office and, and we will arrange a situation and what to try to assist what is the phone number? Do you know it offhand? 323-980-1221. Uh, 323-980-1221. Here's what's interesting about calling the Franchise Tax Board, the Board of Equalization. Yes. It can evoke fear. Yes. It's the tax man. Right. I, I want you to talk to us, talk to our viewers about how today's tax man or woman, Betty Yee's on the board. Yes, yes, uh, Betty. Maybe Michelle Steele's on the board. Yeah. Really are not about uh, trying to trick, cajole, but tr to try to help and just create a fair, equitable system whereby you get what you are entitled. The Board of Equalization is quite different, Brad, as you know. It's mm -hmm. the only elected body in the United States. And we're elected by the people of the state of California. So our interest is protecting California taxpayers, assisting them and encouraging them and providing them the tools and the information and the knowledge and assistance in order to comply with the law, to minimize their penalty, minimize the interest and the frustration that goes along with taxation. What's also frustrating about being a California taxpayer is the tax system is incredibly complicated. It is. And the revenue stream is incredibly um, it's just uneven because of yeah. the way we tax. Mm -hmm. You and I have spoken about tax reform. Mm -hmm. As we look forward, do you see any hope for bona fide tax reform in the state of California? Yeah, I think it, I think it will come about, Brad, but I don't think it'll come until we begin to look at taxes as, a, as an investment. And when mm -hmm. we begin to look at taxes as an investment in our society and those who get the greatest benefit from the freedoms that we have and from the sacrifices That's that people are, are having to make, I, I believe it's there, Brad. I mean, you, if you look at many of the millionaires and billionaires have come out and said, we can pay more and we're willing to Warren pay more. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, exactly. I mean, they've, they're acknowledging that the soldiers, when they go to war and they put their lives on line, that there's a cost associated with being able to accomplish that. When we begin to build roads and schools and educate, mm -hmm. there's a cost, but there's also a benefit. Jerome Horton, I want to thank you so much for joining us on Charter California Edition and for giving us insight as to how we can recapture the most out of the tax credits and tax incentives that may be out there. Exciting stuff. Thank you, Brad. When we come back, we're going to be speaking with a professor from Cal State Long Beach. He is listed as one of the best professors by the Princeton Review. His name is Tom Guffrey. My name is Brad Palmer. So we'll be right back on Charter California Edition. How much money does California's Board of Equalization collect in taxes and fees annually? $25 billion, $50 billion, $65 billion, $80 billion. 
Every year, California's Board of Equalization collects more than $50 billion in taxes and fees supporting state and local government services. Welcome back to Charter California Edition. It's my pleasure to introduce you to one of the 300 best professors in the nation. That is according to the Princeton Review. He is one of Cal State Long Beach's finest. His name is Professor Tom Guffrey. He teaches chemistry. He has brought Chris Adams with us, who is a grad student in biochemistry at Cal State Long Beach. And this is how Professor Guffrey starts his chemistry class every semester. I got a bomb in my hand and I ain't afraid to blow it. I'm crazy and I know it. I'm crazy and I know it. Know it. <laughs> and that is, of course, from LF. Did I say LFAMO? LFMAO, but in my case, it's A, uh, A, B, uh, SMAO almost blew my skinny ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you can see why Professor Tom Guffrey is so revered by his students at Cal State Long Beach. He teaches Chemistry 100? Chemistry 100, chemistry for people who have to take it and hate it, but don't know how much they love it. My job is to unbury that deeply buried love for chemistry deep inside of it. And you're doing it in a very significant way. You, Mr. Adams, get to work with Professor Guffrey on a day in and day out basis. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's well, a pleasure. Uh, I mean, it, he makes the class a performance. I mean, it's not as much being a professor as it is as an artist. In could this you case. imagine walking into Chemistry 100 on the first day and having this man with the bald head, and, you know, just stand up and start singing and then throwing these fire pops right at you. I am so glad that you're here and I am so glad that you are bringing science to life because that's what we have to remember. Science is life. And, and chemistry is such a good thing uh, uh, too, Brad. Chemistry in our world has made it so much better rather than worse. Yes, there are nuclear accidents and there are toxic chemicals, but 99.9% .9 of chemistry is wonderful. Well, think about this. We have two nuclear plants in California, Diablo Canyon and San Onofre. They provide 20% of the state's energy. A absolutely. And look at the good chemistry. And it's green. Exactly. It's very green. No, no CO2, no global warming. And think of all the good things, the vaccines, the foods, the polymers that the shirts we wear, polyester, in on and on. In fact, goes. Chris Adams is about to get his master's in biochemistry. biochemistry. What are you going to do? I'm going to work in the pharmaceutical industry. There you have it. Hopefully, finding a cure for cancer or HIV or whatever it may be. So, both of you have brought some more experiments, and I'm glad that you can provide them to us. The first, well, you already provided the first one. The second one, a little tamer than what we're going to see later on today. We can see the freedom flag. Professor, go to it. Yes, sir, this, this is a demonstration. I try to put many demonstration experiments into the class, laced with humor, as you might guess. Yeah, clearly. Speaking of pharmaceuticals, did you hear the sad story of the guy who, uh, oh, no. who choked, almost choked, on, uh, on Viagra? Oh, what happened? Well, he's okay, but he's got a very stiff neck. <laughs> oh, bum, bum. And that's what you get from Professor Tom Guffrey if you take his chemistry class. What now, about this experiment? Let, let me uh, show you an experiment here with an amazing little uh, piece of paper. It looks like a regular piece of paper. It does. But it's magic. Magicians used to use it. Maybe they still do. It's called flash paper. It's a safe explosive. It is nitrocellulose. And uh, I will use this in a little poem that I've made up. The important things in this life, and I try to tell the students this and, and try to model this. Number one, be a good, decent individual. On this life, which is so short, treat people decently. Be kind. You may not disagree with them, but treat them decently. Number, that's number one. Number two, respect the great country we live in and the freedoms it provides. That's number two. Number three, my main job, 99% of the time, teach chemistry. <laughs> well, I try to intertwine <laughs> Should that. we use these tongs? I, we can, I guess yeah. we should, Brad, Always to be safer. Uh -huh. Now, this little thing is an amazing piece of paper as you will see when it burns it's smokeless ashless and it almost is like it goes into another universe it really doesn't the combustible materials have oxygen in them so it forms odorless uh, colorless gases but it's an amazing experiment but we'll intertwine it with a message to be a good person Go. it's called let your light shine the meaning of life, if the truth be told, is respect all people, young and old. Be as kind as you can. That is God's plan. Be a bright light like this fire of gold. Uh, so that is the amazing I, I, uh, flashback. Honestly, if I was taking chemistry and I had you in front of the class, I would come every day. Well, that's I, the idea. I, your attendance yeah. must be outstanding. It is. Yeah, tell it us. It really is. The seats are always packed. Students are, you know, just filling this, everything up. 
I mean, people love it. It's, you know, participation is really up there. And it really is something, you know, every single day you get something like chemistry, which, you know, you either love it or right, hate it. Right, of course. It. And if you don't love it, you're going to be repulsed by Tom, it. Tom, how'd you find out that you were named one of the best 300 professors in the country? I was up in my old office, Brad, and a student uh, from the Cal State Long Beach 49ers said, uh, there must be a mistake. You named <laughs> it one of the top professors. I said, my God, the system's worse than I thought. Exactly. Uh, and that was back, I think, November of, uh, of last year, I think. I mean, it really does say a lot. The only professor at Cal State Long Beach, not many in California, and I'm really proud to know you, and I'm, I can see why you received this honor. Uh, we have a few more minutes, so guess what? You're going to do another experiment for us. And I might just add, there are many people more deserving than me, Brad, who don't get the input. I have huge classes. My great best friend and college roommate, Dr. Larry Bird, retired from Glendale College. Best organic chem teacher in the country. Oh, you're he not deserves so the award more than I, but I'm honored you're and humble. humbled to take it. Okay, so what are you going to do for us now? Well. Freedom being the big uh, thing, as you know, right. I, I would like to uh, do a freedom fireball, and I will wear my goggles. Which is in, smart. Which exemplifies the safety necessary. And I'm going to take the freedom sign. Chris, are you going to stand and, and help out, or you're okay? Um, you I can stay. Yeah. Uh, you'll stay. Okay. So you can call the paramedics if need be, Chris. And this we got also, the extinguishers handy. Yeah. This also shows what we can do with household items. Okay. The the theme of this course is chemistry for today's world, and it's always fun if we can use household items uh, for our uh, fun. And these are propane? Is that what you've just Yes, forced? these are available from your friendly Ace Hardware store. Okay. They are three propane torches, propane C3H8, a very clean burning hydrocarbon. Yes. And we have here the improbable uh, Fuel, you would not think this is a fuel. This is coffee, mate. Come on, I don't man. work for the Nestle Company. This is non-dairy uh, creamer. It is laden, though, with fat and is very combustible. So it's the fat that's combustible? It is the, the hydrocarbon side chains of the fat that are very combustible. So they haven't put some type of... Oh, no, these are just not natural like, fats. It's not like the, uh, the saccharins that right. we see. No, that no, this is perfectly... Based. Our fats are all... Uh, have a huge hydrocarbon chains in them. Triglycerides are fast. And that's what's combustible. And that the, it's the hydrocarbon part with the hydrocarbon part is much like gasoline, which is very combustible. Now, this is only combustible in powdered form where you, the particles of coffee make can intermingle with the O2 from the air. So I will attempt to make a fireball, and it's good to do this at the end of the interview. Uh. You might put that over to the side, if you could, right in front of you, to where we can show freedom. Up on the table, if you could, because this is the fire of freedom, and uh, <coughs> loving this country is so important, so we'll intertwine an explosion with freedom. The freedom fireball from the patriotic pyro. <laughs> I thank the folks in our military. They bravely fight to keep you and me free. I salute them all with a freedom fireball in celebration of sweet liberty. Wow. In wow. celebration of sweet liberty. Wow. Liberty. Oh. Freedom. <laughs> that is stunning on so many levels. It's stunning because you are so energetic. But it's... I got to lay off the meth, Brad. I was I'm just <laughs> kidding. No, just but I have kidding. to tell you, if you didn't tell me that what burned was fat, I would think it was some type of oil-based product like we see in the saccharins. And so this isn't dangerous, per se, meaning the fat in here, right. other than fat not being good for you generally, <laughs> right. it's not... It's not, you know, that they've somehow taken some old fossil fuel and put yeah. it in our no, no. coffee. No, Th no. This is artery clogging if you eat enough of it and you that, don't get exercise. Question. But, I mean, that's true of, of, of hamburgers, for God's sakes, or potato chips. But, yeah, this is just uh, uh, normal. Uh, I have one stuff. thing to say to you. Congratulations. Well, thank you, sir. I am so impressed by you and by what you provide to us. Well, so to stay, you. we're almost done. We'll turn those off in a second. I, I hope the place won't cut. So, no, don't <laughs> worry. So this is Tom Guffrey. This is his. And, and I must uh, congratulate Chris. He's been an indispensable right. aide and being a proctor for years. Congratulations. Chris has helped me win this award. And again, many are more deserving than I, but I'll... it's an honor to get it. I appreciate it. Congratulations. I'm Brad Palmer. Thanks for watching Charter, California edition.